Saints finally come away with it. Jonah, I personally think the turning point of that game, the very end of the second period, the first penalty, Jake Boltman goes to the box for icing Barczewski unnecessarily. The Wolverines would go on to score two, including the game-winning goal after that. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you're, just like you said, that's really where the tide turned for the Irish. They had Michigan exactly where they wanted them, a two-goal lead just about to head into the third period. They play such a defensive brand of hockey that this is exactly the spot they wanted to be in against a talented offense like Michigan. But these penalties really cost them, unforced errors. And play underway here. Notre Dame brings it into the Michigan zone, but the Wolverines pick it up, bump it back down. Let's talk about the style of play tonight. Michigan is a fast team. They move the puck well. What does Notre Dame need to do to slow them down? Yeah, I think for Notre Dame, it's the physicality that I mentioned. They, they can take the body away from Michigan, really make Michigan go to the outside, push them out, make, take those tough angled shots. It'll be a lot easier for them to defend. Marshall Warren intercepts a pass in the neutral zone, rings it around the boards. Stopped by Ryan Bischel back behind the net and rung out to the corner. Notre Dame looks to move through the neutral zone. Again, this is where Michigan does so well picking up pucks. There's a wide shot. If Michigan is doing what they want to do tonight, Jonah, look to see a lot of back and forth play. Yeah, Michigan, a shootout would favor Michigan in a situation like this. Quick shot from the point. Rebound in front, no one's home. Wolverines pick up the puck and manage to clear it. Their offenses are just so their offense is just so high powered that if they can get into a high goal scoring situation, I don't think Notre Dame's offense will be able to keep up with them. Of course, it all comes down to Ryan Bischel in the back end for Notre Dame. Stood on his head last night, unable to finish. Five goals allowed, over 40 saves, and we already have some extracurriculars. The first whistle of the game, there's Jake Barczewski, the Michigan goalie, with a few choice words. Another look at how it happened. There's the shot. Bavaro with a little bit of a late icing on Barczewski. Notre Dame comes away with the draw. Quick shot runs into traffic. Dropped out to Fisher, who will wrap it around the boards. A stop is there to play it for Michigan. Janicki drops back, picks up the puck. Can't maintain control, and the Wolverines once again bring it to their zone to reset. D to D action and an errant pass again. Steve Holtz picks the puck back up. Can't control it, and Plasinski bumps it into the neutral zone, and the Wolverines push it back down. We'll have a delayed penalty, Jonah. We haven't talked about this yet. The penalties really killed Notre Dame last night. Let's look at what just happened. There's the trip. Yeah, just gets his stick caught up in the skates of Philip Point there. Chase Bletsky, excuse me. But here comes this Michigan power play, number one in the country, converting in over 35% of their chances this season when no other team in the NCAA is above 30. So that just shows the firepower they have here. Let's not forget, Michigan went three for three on the power play last night. Seamus Casey controls the puck for Michigan. Can't move in towards the net. And Notre Dame clears it for the first time. Marcheski will play it back behind the net. Some pressure from Landon Slaggard. He had a goal last night for Notre Dame. Here comes Gavin Brindley racing to the zone. Drops it back to TJ Hughes. Aaron pass. Slaggard intercepts it, but can't hold on to it. Seamus Casey will pick it up for Michigan. Moves it near side to McGordy. He'll pull up. Bump to Casey. About a minute 30 on the power play to go. Back to McGordy. will take his time. Looks low. To the point and Casey again. He'll try for Gavin Brindley. The shot wide and ricochets around the net. Casey tries for TJ Hughes, who couldn't get a stick on it, and Notre Dame clears once more. Jacob Truscott starts things back off for Michigan. Frank Nazar cuts down on the near side but runs into trouble. The Wolverines will reset. Truscott. Drops off to Moldenhauer. Over to Shifsky and a cross-ice pass. Marcus Stapa drops it off. Now Moldenhauer again. Back to the point. 
26 seconds to go on the power play and another errant pass is intercepted. Hunter Strand will clear for the Fighting Irish. Michigan unable to control the possession the way they want to so far, Jonah. Yeah, that was a little bit of a sloppy power play, not moving the puck well enough into the open areas. Notre Dame maybe is starting to anticipate what Michigan's been doing after they've played their last three games against this Michigan power play. So we'll see if that's something that we continue to see throughout the game. Fighting Irish return to full strength, and for the first time this series, kill off a penalty. Ernesty picks up the puck in the Michigan zone, looks up ice to LaPointe, who bumps it back to Ernesty. Dropped off to Ethan Edwards, who will take a moment with it. Quick up ice pass, tipped by Draper to avoid the icing, but into the netting. We'll have a stoppage at 15.23 to go. Oh, Jonah. We'll take a look at the Big Ten tournament. Here's the big update since yesterday. Minnesota sweeps Penn State to secure their seed in the semifinals. Of course, Michigan with a one-game lead in this series, and Ohio State the one-game lead after an upset in those, their series. Yeah, so if Ohio State goes on to win tonight against Wisconsin, Ohio State would be heading to East Lansing instead of Michigan, and Michigan would be heading to play at Minnesota. Wolverines controlling. Brindley under pressure. Janicki playing physical, physically on the boards. Buck bounces out to a lead. Played by Barcheski back behind the net. He'll try for Duke. Trickles to a stop up. And Michigan bumps it back to Holtz. Near side now to Shifsky. An intercepted pass. Davis rips a shot. It's wide. Good job by Notre Dame keeping the puck in. Something we saw from them yesterday. They struggled to control that sustained offensive possession against the Michigan breakout. Holtz goes for the dump and chase for Michigan. Moldenhauer picks the puck up far side boards, wraps in front, and can't get the shot through traffic. Fantilli tries a shot from the point, and it's brushed away by Bischel. Now Carter Slager moves up ice. It's a good block by Casey. Davis was wide open. Here's a three on two. Hughes. Moves the puck over and the shot won't go. Now the Notre Dame breakout once more. Slager looks up ice, unable to control it. Fantilli plays it off the boards. Fantilli manages to connect with Hughes. Bumps it over to Duke in the neutral zone, who has Ernesty. The shot ricochets back in front of the net. Ernesty almost found a rebound. And the Fighting Irish managed to clear. Jacob Truscott picks the puck up for Michigan. Moves the, up to Marshall Warren and Frank Nazar. And bump back to Nazar. He'll try a shot. It's wide. Truscott plays it at the point. Another shot wide once more. Ernesty moves it low. And Frank Nazar assists behind the net. A pass in front. Ernesty, the one-time shot. Dylan Duke had a second chance. Neither will go. We've seen a combination of a few nice saves from Ryan Bischel as well. There's a few missed opportunities from Michigan. The Wolverines wide on a few uh, few shots. Yeah, that's the first high percentage opportunity I think we've really seen in this game. Great stop by Bischel. But look at this pass by Frank Nazar. He's going up the ice, spots Ernesty crashing the net, hits him right in stride for that one-timer opportunity. Dylan Duke finds the rebound but was losing his balance. zone won by the Fighting Irish. Dylan Duke grabs the puck out of the air and dumps it back low. Fisher will play it for Notre Dame. Moves it to the far side. And the Irish clear. McGrordy looks to connect with Brindley. He can't. 
Friendly chases after the puck. Shifsky adds help for Michigan. Under pressure, however, and poked away. Slaggard and Knubel working in tandem. Knubel tries to drop it to Fisher, who can't connect with it. Knubel back behind the net. Moynihan behind him. Slaggard tries a one-timer and right into the chest of Barczewski. Finally, a shot attempt from Drew Bavaro. Heads into the netting. We'll have another stoppage. 11.58 to go in the first. Yeah, good stop by Barczewski to be in position that point-blank opportunity. Drew Bavaro, that he is the highest shooting player on this Notre Dame team. So he likes to get shots off, especially in situations like that. And of course, knotted two of the four goals the Irish would score yesterday. Now, key to the game, Jonah, a hot start for Notre Dame. They're 10, 7 and 2 when scoring first. Excuse me, that's 10, 3 and 2 when scoring first. That's despite losing last night. And Notre Dame. Strikes first tonight. Bavaro again with his third goal of the season, series. Excuse me. Right off the faceoff. There was a lot of traffic in front of the net. I don't think Barczewski got a good look at the puck here. Let's see. Yeah, I think Dylan Duke might have been obstructing his view a little bit, but good shot placement by Bavaro. We just discussed how Drew Bavaro was key to the Notre Dame offense last night. What a shot, and just like the night before, Notre Dame finds itself with a one-goal lead midway through the first period. Well, and like you mentioned, a hot start from Notre Dame tonight. They already have as many shots in this first period as they did in the entire first period yesterday, and we're only halfway through. Four to two in shots, a quick lead. Janicki tries another on Barczewski. Looks for the five hole, and Jake Barczewski manages to cover it up. Michigan's going to be looking to get a response from Barczewski here. Had a little bit of a rough night last night. Didn't get a good look at that one, but we're going to hope that he responds through Michigan, be able to get some more saves, and really be someone that they can rely on going forward. Another near side faceoff in the Michigan zone, how it worked out for Notre Dame moments ago. Seedham tries cross ice. Janicki, a tough angle shot, and the Irish continue to control the puck. They'll dump it low into the corner. Additional pressure. Hunter Strand cuts out and tries a shot off the chest of Barczewski and into the near side corner. And Marshall Warren manages to pick up the puck as it trickles out for Michigan, but unable to clear. He'll recover the puck at the blue line and move to dump it in. Seedham with assists from Boltman playing it for the Irish. Ryan Seedham pulls up behind the net. Will take his time, moves to the far side. A long pass to Knubel. He enters Michigan zone with speed, pulls up, and the Irish move it to Fisher at the point, who dumps it back down low. Edwards fakes the icing attempt, manages to clear to the neutral zone and back into the Michigan's hands. Here's a pass to Shifsky. He'll try a shot. Redirected, McGroarty whiffs. And Fisher again clears it for the Irish. Just shy of the net, that'll be an icing and a stoppage with 9.53 to go in the period. Yeah, Michigan has not really been able to get many offensive chances outside of that shot by Ernesty earlier in the period. A lot slower of a start compared to yesterday versus Notre Dame's hotter start tonight. We'll have to see if this continues throughout the game. Last night, Notre Dame had a rough first period, but a huge second period. Michigan looking to create some offense. Here's a shot from the point. The rebound, Ernesty off the blocker of Ryan Bischel.
Duke and Nazar chase into the corner and move the puck out front. No one's home. And Ernesty steals the puck away in the neutral zone. He'll come in hot, a three on two opportunity. A wide shot ricochets all the way back. Luca Fantilli has to chase it for Michigan. Fantilli gaining speed through the neutral zone. Bumps the puck off the boards. LaPointe chases. But a Wolverine change leaves an opportunity. Janicki tries to bounce the puck off the boards. It won't go. Draper picks it up for Michigan. Cuts in near side and pulls up. LaPointe chases into the corner. Bumps it to the point. Marshall Warren. Moves it low where the Irish clear it to the point once more. Davis will pick it up and bump it into the Michigan zone. Marshall Warren grabs a hold of the puck for Michigan. LaPointe now still on the near side and a dump for the Wolverines. They'll get three fresh legs on the ice. Davis tries a risky pass. It's intercepted, but offsides is called. Yeah, this is exactly where Notre Dame wants to be. They're seven and one when leading after the first period and one in 10 when trailing after the first period, like last night. So, like I said, this is a defensive team. They're, they play very conservatively, so if they can get an early lead, they can kind of just park the bus and rely on those early goals. Of course, comes down to holding off that Michigan offense, which they've been doing a fine job of so far tonight. Moldenhauer up the ice for the Wolverines. Takes a check, and that'll be a penalty. We've said it a few times. Notre Dame has to keep itself out of the box. Let's look at what happened. That's got to be a leg check on Ernesty. Yeah, they called it. excuse me. They called a knee penalty here. And you can see where that came from. There was some knee on knee contact as Moenhauer tries to cut to the inside. And that's a really tough play for the Notre Dame defender because when he's trying to cut inside like that, you're still trying to get the body and you end up pushing your leg to the inside, which creates that leg on leg contact, which you're not intentionally trying to do, but it ends up happening. So with that, Michigan will find itself up a man for the next two minutes. Wolverines win the draw. They're 0 for 1 on the power play today. 3 for 4 so far in the series. They went 3 for 3. Yesterday it's tipped in front. Casey to Hughes. Michigan strikes early in the power play. We're tied at one, Jonah. It's a great tip by TJ Hughes out in front, and that's the puck luck that you need to get back in this game if you're Michigan. And this is exactly what you don't need if you're Notre Dame. We talked about those unforced errors, these penalties, giving this power play an opportunity. Great hand-eye coordination here by Hughes. Hits it out of the air. Notre Dame might want to look at this for a high stick. Looks like they're having that conversation over at the bench right now. We'll have to take a closer look to get that, but I, it looks like they're going to keep this a good goal. Now, to emphasize the importance of staying out of the box for Notre Dame, the fun fact that our one-man stats department, Kellen Flynn, has pulled up. Michigan converts on power plays at more than double the rate Notre Dame allows goals on penalties this season. Michigan already one for two today, three for three yesterday. We'll wait the referee's call on the review. Here's that review I just mentioned. We'll have to see. So the rule here is you cannot make contact with the puck with your stick above the crossbar. To me, I think it's below because the puck kind of takes an upward trajectory off the stick and still goes in. So I would have to say I would think this would still be a good goal, but this is a close one. The goal will stand. And that is a huge decision in favor of Michigan. Hughes 
not called for high sticking. A good goal on an excellent tip. How about that hand-eye coordination, Jonah? Yeah, unreal. And there's the fifth assist from Seamus Casey this weekend. He's having a phenomenal series moving the puck. It's what he's done all season. He's the highest scoring defenseman in NCAA hockey. So it's what he does. Not dissimilar from what we saw last night. The Fighting Irish struck early. The Wolverines responded in time. Some Michigan fans wanted to hit from behind on that one. No call. There'll be extracurriculars in front of the net as Garrett Schiffsky lies face down on the ice. Yeah, this is tough for the Wolverines. Schiffsky's had a really great second half of this season. Really, he's come into play on this first line. The penalty is not released. They can keep scoring as much as they want throughout this five minutes. They will continue having the power play. Of course, a five-minute penalty earned by Drew Bavaro last night in Notre Dame. Changed the dynamic of this game in Michigan. Comes out hot. There's a quick shot from McGrory on the near side as the Wolverines move the puck around. Notre Dame able to clear the puck. Here comes Slager racing down ice, and Brindley will bat the puck out of the air. Yeah, so what Michigan likes to do here, they have Seamus Casey at the top of the umbrella running the point. They have Rucker, McGrody, and Gavin Brindley on the two sides with Duke crashing the net and with TJ Hughes usually as a buffer. And here's an opportunity, Knubel being chased by Duke, takes a shot, it's wide. Best opportunity for a goal we've seen in some time from Notre Dame. Michigan comes close to allowing a short-handed goal. Wolverines recover possession. Escape that experience unscathed. Casey bumps it down to Brenly, who takes his time looking for an option. Low to Hughes, tries to move it in front, and it's tipped off to Casey at the point. Casey, far side, Brindley, one-timer. Brushed away by Bischel. And again, Michigan can't hold on to the puck. Casey picks it back up. McGrory open, and what a save! Oh. Ryan Bischel spreads Eagle. It just saved Notre Dame a goal. Oh my goodness, Owen. What a save by Bishop. <laughs> I cannot believe what I just saw. We just saw the reigning Big Ten goalie of the year doing what he does best. McGrordy, look at all the net he has open when he takes that shot. And watch how fast Bishop moves across the net. This is what makes him such an excellent goaltender. Catches the puck with his left arm and pinches it against his pads. Unreal. Can't do it any better than that. A minute 20 into the five minute major. Wolverines try to move the puck in front. No one can find it. It was at a stop of skate. And finally, Ryan Seedham chases it out and will clear for the Irish. Truscott starts things off for Michigan. Quick pass to Nazar, dropped off to LaPointe. Nazar cuts down below, and Moldenhauer bumps it around the boards to a Stapa. Stapa looking for an opportunity, tries for Nazar, but can't make it. And once again, Notre Dame's able to clear. Looks like Michigan's moved away from having Ethan Edwards in this power play two unit and putting Jacob Truscott up top instead. Wolverines attempt the slingshot, drop it back to Brindley. Quick pass to McGordy. Duke with an opportunity and moved over to Hughes for a one-timer. Another nice save from Ryan Bischel. Yeah, we've seen this all season from Bischel. Another look here at this save, again with a one-timer from the wing, this time by TJ Hughes. He's been phenomenal all season. We'd say that Notre Dame is a really defensive team, really conservative, but a lot of that comes from their goalie. They tend to give up a lot of high shot games. Bischel's got two games over 50 saves this season, but he's been huge in really helping them step up and get some wins. Casey crosses to McGrory, 2.30 to go in the five minute major. A wide shot stopped by Ryan Bischel again, and a little bit of physicality in front of the net. 
Here's a quick shot. Bischel. Ooh. I saw Duke fall. I didn't see how it happened. Bischel gives him the shove in front. It's like he's playing with a little fire tonight. <laughs> Far side faceoff won by Michigan. Casey controls at the point. D to D to McGordy. Low to Duke. What a setup. Brindley with the one timer. Another nice save by Ryan Bischel. He's been doing a phenomenal job at moving side to side across the nets. Michigan's been moving the puck really quickly across the crease. He's been getting to that side just as quickly as they've been moving it. Another look at how it happened. McGordy low. Quick pass across the ice. Brindley's fast, not faster than Ryan Bischel. <laughs> 4.38 to go in the period, 2.18 in the Michigan power play. Michigan comes away with the puck, moves it to the point and down low. Estapa tries the one-timer, it's blocked. Truscott, a rebound in front. Moldenhauer couldn't find the puck. Moldenauer moves back behind the net. Three maize jerseys, two blue jerseys. Killing some time off the power play. Down to a minute 50 for the Wolverines. Edwards gets into it in front of the net. Some tussle with Paul Fisher. And finally, the Irish are able to clear. It's been a very effective kill so far for Notre Dame, Jonah. It has, and a lot of that, again, comes from Bischel. Notre Dame has done a good job at limiting the high-quality chances, but the ones that have been seen from Michigan have all been stopped by Bischel. Michigan again opts for the slingshot. Gavin Brindley comes in with speed, drops to McGordy, but he's not ready to pick up the puck. Casey tries to move it low, but can't in time. Ryan Seedham will clear for Notre Dame. There's some quick pressure on Barczewski. Gavin Brindley now over the block M. Quick pass to Hughes. He's under pressure. Excellent play by Carter Slager to move Hughes off the puck. Wolverines recover possession. McGroarty under a minute to go in the power play. Can't hold on to the Michigan possession and has to bump the puck all the way back to Barczewski. That's three really messy zone entries from Michigan in a row on that power play. Nice escape move from Casey. And Warren enters with some physicality. Wolverines try for a cross-ice pass, but again, it doesn't work. Michigan's been unable to set up, as you were saying. And now down a man, Notre Dame tries for an opportunity in front. Ernesty picks the puck up for Michigan. Marshall Warren intercepts a clear attempt. Whiffs on the one-timer. And Michigan bumps it out to Ernesty. Another nice save from Ryan Bischel. Master Domenico released from his five-minute major unscathed in the Notre Dame penalty kill. Survives a five-minute penalty. Really impressive kill by Notre Dame and really important in terms not even just this game, their season comes down to tonight. Unless they win the Big Ten tournament, it's unlikely that they will make the NCAA tournament. So when they are eliminated from this tournament, if they're eliminated, it's looking like this could be the end. Here comes Moldenhauer, cuts in, picks the puck out of the air, and it's off the post. What an athletic play that was. Ryan Bischel leaves the net. But Moldenhauer unable to finish. Master Domenico fighting for the puck on the near side boards. Bumps it into the Michigan zone. Duke picks it up for the Wolverines, but can't control. Davis comes away with it, tries a shot deflected wide. Holtz into the corner. Ricocheted off the boards and dumped back in. Wolverines connect with Nazar. He can't hold on to the puck. Davis grabs it again for the Irish. Duke will pick it up. Near side to Holtz, one minute to go in the period. One in which, if you're Brandon Nerado, you're desperate to exit. The Wolverines need a reset. Yeah, they picked things up towards the end of that period, obviously because of the power play. 
but they need to keep getting more shots on Bishol, and importantly, they need to get these rebounds. bishol has been really good at stopping these first shots, but there have been a few times where the puck's been floating around in the crease. They need to capitalize on those. Carpenter dumps one down and stopped by Barcheski. And if you notice the opening behind the net, Garrett Shifsky re-enters the game for Michigan. Looks plenty healthy, Jonah. That's really great for Brandon Arado and his team. Shifsky centering the first line here. He's been doing a great job and really great to have him back. Near side draw, won by the Wolverines. McGrordy, a long pass to Brindley, tipped into the Notre Dame zone. Irish try a long breakout pass. It doesn't work. Seamus Casey picks it up for Michigan. Over to Brindley. Quick cut across. The play, the puck in front. Hughes finishes for Michigan. Chaos in front, and TJ Hughes cuts in to give the Wolverines a lead with nine seconds to go in the period. There are those rebounds I just mentioned. Official, great job stopping McGordy on this first shy. TJ Hughes crashes the net wide open. Bishel had to come out to stop Rucker with so much speed. And the puck sitting in the crease, TJ crashing, great goal. And this is credit to the entire line. The first line with TJ Hughes substituted for Garrett Shifsky. Beautiful pass, cross ice starts it off. Notre Dame will challenge that a pass was off sides. Our linesmen have come to a decision. Here's the call. After review, the call on the ice will stand. Good goal. The call stands. Michigan's goal will count. Two to one, our Two score with nine seconds, seconds to go in the first period. Play a game penalty. And with that, Notre Dame has assessed a penalty for their second unsuccessful challenge. So that's going to go into the second period. Michigan will have a power play which makes this situation even worse for the Irish. There's the player from the bench. Serving for Notre Dame, number 18, Patrick Moynihan. So Notre Dame takes a bet after the, they successfully kill off a five-minute major. There's another quick push from Michigan. Unable to finish, McGrordy with one final shot. You can see the frustration Ryan Bischel facing in excellent first period. It'll be interesting to see if Michigan can play a complete 60 minutes. This is something they've struggled with all season, is they get off to leads early in the game, but they have a tough time holding on in the second and third period. Michigan controlling the puck early. They'll drop it back to Brindley and another quick pass. Casey at the point. Down low to Rucker McGordy. His pass intercepted by the Notre Dame captain. Tries a long pass to Knubel. Plays the puck in the corner, but quickly as it's stolen away by Hughes. McGordy swoops in, picks it up. Here's the Michigan drive. Casey, a little bit of an escape move. Cuts back out to the top of the ice. Down low to Brindley now. Back to the point. Casey whiffs on a shot. Wolverines recover. But Brindley can't hold on to the puck. Notre Dame adds a push. A wraparound pass attempt. Off the stick of Justin Janicki, recovered by Michigan. Moldenhauer pulls up at the far side hash marks. And again, can't hold on to it. This is looking a lot like that five minute major power play. Here's a drive and a quick shot. That's why Drew Bavaro scored two yesterday, scored the first today, adds another shot but can't hit the net. We'll have a stoppage of play, 18.44 to go, 30 seconds, 35 rather. 
remaining in the Michigan power play. Yeah, this Michigan passing has been pretty sloppy, in my opinion. You've seen they've had a they've given up a lot of opportunities coming into the zone, especially on these power plays, because they haven't been able to keep a hold of the puck. Michigan wins the draw, but a little bit too much force on it from Estapa. They send it all the way back to the Michigan zone. 30 seconds to go in the power play. One last push for the Wolverines. Shivsky bumps the puck down low. Moldenhauer cuts in to pick it up. He tries for Shivsky behind the back. It won't go, and Notre Dame tries to pass to Janicki. Truscott will battle for it behind the net. Estapa, Molder, Moldenhauer, and Nazar all drop back to assist. And Notre Dame will return to full strength as the penalty expires. Nazar cuts in. Some movement in front. Estapa fires in to a crowded crease. The puck makes it through, but there's another save. A rebound in front. No one's home to recover. Notre Dame has forced to ice to get a stoppage. Marshall Warren there to pick it up for Michigan. So 17.48 to go. Michigan unable to convert on another power play. And yet the Wolverines seemingly controlling the pace of the beginning of this period. Yeah, that's the thing for Notre Dame. Yes, you've just killed two huge power plays in a row. Take a look at Coach Brandon Dorado in his second season with the Wolverines. Brought the team to the Frozen Four last season, hoping to make the tournament this year. Had to take over for Mel Pearson pretty suddenly at the beginning of last year. So pretty impressive what he's been able to do with this program. He's led this team to great success. Probably not pleased with the power play's performance tonight, but must give credit to Ryan Bischel and net. Ethan Edwards controlling for Michigan. Long cross ice pass to Ernesty, unable to control it. And the Irish try for a breakout. Moynihan, who served the penalty for Notre Dame, a bench minor for delay of game. Bumps it to behind the net. Delayed penalty coming for Michigan. Perhaps roughing behind the net. Moynihan driving in, gets a shot off. And Ernesty finally able to get a stick on the puck. Jonah will await the call, but Notre Dame will go up a man for the next two minutes. I think it's on number 22, Philip LaPointe, down in the corner here. Minor penalty to Michigan's number 22, two minutes to 40. I just, I, I'm not a big fan of that call, Owen. It two did, minutes for boarding. Did not look too egregious to me. It didn't look like he was in that awkward of a spot along the boards. I don't know, that's a weak call in my opinion. Nonetheless, Michigan down a man for the next two minutes. This is kind of a roles reverse situation. Coming into today, Michigan very strong on the power play. Notre Dame stronger defensively. We'll see how the Irish do up a man. Seedham at the point. Drops it over to Knubel, back to the point. Seedham, cross ice look. And back to the point once more. He'll take his time, dropped off to Knubel at the Big Ten logo. Moved low to Moynihan. Moynihan tries out front. Estapa bumps it back out to the point. Knubel again moving towards the hash marks. Low to Slager. And back out to Seedham. Now to Justin Janicki. Knubel tries a one-timer, moves it low, and a quick love from Barczewski earns a stoppage, 16-15 to go in the period. 50 seconds down on the penalty kill for Michigan. Big stop by Barczewski with the glove here. Hard to tell if that one was on net or not. Either way, Barczewski making an important save. Notre Dame comes away with the draw. Bavardo heard his name plenty tonight, tries a one-timer from the point, trickles into the corner, and Schiffsky manages to clear for Michigan. Here come the Fighting Irish. Bavardo cutting down the near side. 
We have a broken stick on the ice lost by an Irish. Edwards looks up ice. Here's a Michigan drive, a two on three. Shot off on Bischel. And Shifsky heads into the corner to fight for it. That'll cut some more time off the Notre Dame power play. Down to 20 seconds. One last push for Notre Dame. Fleming cutting down the near side. Wraps it around to the point. Low to Ali. Out to Bavardo and back to Fleming. Here's a shot, a tie. And Marcus Stapa manages to grab on to a loose puck. Can't connect with Lapointe, who's released from the boarding penalty. The Wolverines with another successful kill. Hunter Strand in a tussle in the corner. Wolverines come away with the puck. Marshall Warren tries for a stoppa. He stopped at the blue line, but manages to move the puck out to Hughes. Hughes pulls up, tries for a shot. It's deflected into the near side corner. And again, the Irish clear it. Ali, with the assist of Davis, fighting for it. And back into the possession of T.J. Hughes. He'll pull up, quick pass to Brindley, really well set up. Puck still in play, Bischel out of place. But the Wolverines can't make something happen in time. Brindley, back to Casey at the Big Ten logo. Casey tries another pet shot that runs into traffic. Bischel out of position again, but recovers. D to D to Hughes, and Casey now at the circle. A few quick moves from him out to McGrory. Tries the one-timer, and Bischel covers his own rebound in front as Brindley gets into a tussle with Jada Davis. Great stop by Bischel there. A lot of traffic out in front. Looked like a few redirections. Take a look here. Nice shot by McGrody. Yeah, off the shin pads of the Notre Dame defender. Almost goes five hole on Bischel, but great job to wrap it up. And there you can see Gavin Brindley. Not taking too kindly to the slashes from Jaden Davis. Brindley makes his voice heard. A few physical pushes and gets out of there before anything can escalate. Will be a draw in the Notre Dame zone. Duke up against Knubel. Knubel wins it for Notre Dame, who tries to clear it high off the boards. Nazar shoots into traffic, but Marshall Warren re enters the zone in time to save the offsides. Notre Dame on the zone entry, tripped up. Here comes a delayed penalty on Michigan. Patrick Moynihan tripped on the zone entry. It looks to be Josh Ernesty heading to the penalty box. I'm interested to see what they're going to call here. It looks like might be another boarding call hit from behind in that awkward area along the board. Michigan number six has a minor penalty on the ice. The play is under further review. So they've called it a minor penalty. Didn't say what for, but now says under review, which means that they're going to be looking at this for a five-minute major, similar to the situation we saw in the first period. Stoppa and Knubel set to redo the draw. Knubel wins it this time for Notre Dame. Seedham controlling at the near side point. He'll look cross ice to Moynihan, back to Seedham. And quick thinking from Stoppa pokes the puck away, the first Michigan clear of the kill. Knubel recovers the puck, bumps it low into the corner. The Wolverines try for the clear, instead it's a pass out to the point. Seedham at the Big Ten logo. Low to Moynihan. And lower to Slagert. Back to Moynihan in the corner. Cross ice pass. Slagert finishes on the cross. Notre Dame ties it at two. Great find with that cross crease pass. 
right on the doorstep for Landon Slager. And you see what's tough about that situation. Slager comes from the corner. The defenseman's not looking at him because he's so far out of the play. He comes back into the play. Great vision by Moynihan to see that, and great finish by Landon. Yeah, I could have put it better myself. On defense, especially in a penalty kill, the goal to box out the opponent, hold them to the edges. Tyler Duke doesn't have vision of Slager cutting in. And he posts right up at the post. Finishes for Notre Dame. Two to two our score in a whole new ball game, Jonah. Again, these penalties killing both teams now. Unforced errors. Like yesterday, the Notre Dame power play converts. And like you just said, not to <laughs> be a broken record here, but staying out of the box, key to winning this game for both of these programs from here on out. Here's an opportunity for Notre Dame. Ali couldn't make anything out of it, recovers the puck in the near side corner under pressure from Shivsky. Bumped out to Bavar Bavardo. A low pass attempt connects with Master Domenico. Rucker McGrordy not ready to receive a puck right in front of the crease. Bavaro cycles the puck back down low, receives it back, and out to the point. Quick pass in front, gorgeous play set up. Bavaro can't finish. And the Wolverines finally manage a clear. Ethan Edwards exhausted. Shifsky, McGrordy all get off the ice for Michigan. Fresh legs as the Notre Dame push continues. Yeah, you could tell Ethan Edwards was getting tired on that play. It was kind of an unnecessary pass to McCrory there. Here's an opportunity. LaPointe rips one. Ryan Bishop leaves a rebound, but no one's home. Another opportunity. Truscott tries the cross to Moldenhauer. He can't connect for a tip. And the Irish come the other way. Barczewski loves a trickling shot. We'll have a stoppage at 11.05. Yeah, to talk again about these penalties, both team seasons kind of come down to this game, especially Notre Dame. Notre Dame needs to win the Big Ten tournament if they want a chance of playing in the NCAA tournament. Michigan, they could drop this game. However, when you look at the bubble for the NCAA tournament, Michigan is floating around 13, 14 spot, and it's tough because some teams will get automatic bids from conference championships and only the top 16 will make it. So they need to kind of, it, they need to hope for a sweep here and hope to maybe win against Michigan State next weekend or Minnesota, whoever they would play, to kind of get into that safe area on pairwise. If they drop this game and maybe the next game, chances are they won't be in the NCAA tournament. So this game is pretty much the end of the line for both teams. We'll take another look. Scratch that. Ernesty cut in on the draw and carried the puck all the way down to the Notre Dame zone. Wolverines managed a shot off on Bischel, set themselves up on the near side circle in the Notre Dame zone. Duke wins the draw for Michigan. Drop to his brother Tyler, who moves it up to Casey on the near side boards. Casey in a tussle for the puck, a few quick moves, and loses an edge. It'll be a two on one. Notre Dame racing down, dropped out, Master Domenico finishes for the Irish. We'll have another change in the lead. Notre Dame three, Michigan two. Great job by Moynihan to kind of fly high coming into that zone, get that loose puck. See this two on one, good stop on the pass, and Moynihan, like I said, trailing behind. It's hard to get to that puck that goes forward when you're coming back if you're the defenseman. See, Nazar tries to adjust, but Moynihan coming forward puts that right over Barczewski's arm. Center ice draw, one by Michigan.
My correction on that. I don't know how I saw that as Master Domenico. Patrick Moynihan finished the goal, as you mentioned. They both start with an M. <laughs> I don't think that was it. <laughs> There'll be a draw in the Notre Dame zone for Michigan now trailing by one. Just over 10 minutes to go in the second. No one comes away with the draw, but Michigan picks it up in the corner. Hunter Strand marches down ice for Notre Dame. Janicki following, but quick turnover, and the Wolverines race back into the Notre Dame zone. Brindley circles the net, quick cross ice pass. Schiffsky considered wrapping around, pulls out, tries for a shot, and Edwards can't keep the puck in at the blue line. That was a really important block by Notre Dame there. Bishop was off balance, had lost his stick, and was not in position to make a save. Great stop. We'll have another stoppage. 9.25 to go in the second. The icing resets us for a Michigan offensive zone draw. So 24 shots to Michigan's name, 13 to Notre Dame's, Jonah. Why do the Irish have the lead right now? They've had less chances, but the chances they have gotten have been quality. Then you have to look at Ryan Bischel, obviously. He stopped a lot of Michigan's really good chances, especially on the power play. Barczewski has not played up to the level that I think he would like to play. Um, and it, it shows on the scoreboard with the, with the shots. Battle for the puck in the corner. Moldenhauer pokes it out to Hughes. Back to Moldenhauer in the slot. Slides it over through the crease. And back to the point. Truscott tries another shot. Bischel couldn't quite see it. Found it at the last moment for the block. Moldenhauer controlling for Michigan under pressure. Cycles around out to Hughes and low to Truscott. The one-timer won't go. But back to Truscott who bumps the puck low. Notre Dame able to move the puck through the neutral zone. Slaggart dumps it in. Casey using physicality in the corner separates the man from the puck. Moldenhauer up ice to Hughes, fakes a slap shot, but Estapa's caught off guard and goes off sides. Playoff hockey game, Notre Dame up a goal over Michigan, an opportunity in front. Duke finishes on the rebound. The Wolverines respond. We're tied at three. When you're playing against an outstanding goaltender like Ryan Bischel, these are the types of goals you need to get to go your way. When he's, when he's out of position, when he doesn't see the puck, but these rebounds, you gotta finish them. That's just, this is what Dylan Duke does. That's where he scores a majority of his goals, is right in the crease, and he does a great job there. The credit, I think it was Ernesty, who after the rebound slid it over to Duke. That was a three-shot effort. And Duke finishes at the very end for Michigan. It makes all the difference. We're tied at three with 7.50 to go in the second period. And what a game we have here tonight. What a series we've had. This has been phenomenal hockey, really exciting. Now again, we've said it before. I think it's worth saying again, tied midway through the third. We've had plenty of changes in the lead. Both programs need to stay out of the box. Edwards controls on the breakout for Michigan, avoids a hit from Knubel. Schiffsky dumps in for Michigan. Brindley adds pressure. Knubel controlling at the blue line for Notre Dame. A long cross-ice pass. Carter Slager 
struggles to hold on to it, has help. Patrick Moynihan, last to score for Notre Dame, dives in to assist, and the Wolverines clear to the neutral zone. Fisher, under pressure from LaPointe, drops all the way back to the red line. The Wolverine forecheck works. They'll regain possession. Truscott, near side. Wraps all the way around the net and back out to the point. Here's a shot high and tipped by Draper. He'll lose an edge. Can't find the puck. Notre Dame breaks out. It's Janicki. Rushing down ice into the corner. Lays one out for Fisher, but he can't get there in time. And the Wolverines move back up ice. Hughes tips it down, and Notre Dame clears an opportunity. Janicki, unable to finish the shot, backhands it gently against Barczewski and finds the puck in the far side corner. Astapa adds pressure, steals it away. T.J. Hughes up the far side, neutral zone. Bischel is doing it on both ends there, making saves on one end and making a cross ice pass for a chance on the other. Bischel really works to quarterback this Notre Dame team. And again, he's the reason they're in this game. Michigan's out shooting Notre Dame 29 to 14, over a two to one ratio right now. And he's more than a goalie to this team. You can see he's an assistant captain to this team. Shows how much of a leader he is, show much how much the players and coaches respect him, support him, and really value him as a member of this team as more than just a goalie. Draw just outside of the Michigan zone. Notre Dame pokes it low. Marshall Warren looks to Duke in the neutral zone. Can't quite connect. Back to Warren, up to Nazar. Sprinting over the block M. Nazar drops to Duke. And Notre Dame comes away with the puck. Fleming. Cross ice pass to Slager. He'll take a tough angle shot. Barczewski takes it into the chest. And there's another stoppage. 5.27 to go in the second. Here's another look at how the play unfolded. Half shot, half saucer pass. Carter Slagert lays it out for Barczewski in a nice easy save. And Notre Dame has been relentlessly laying the body on these guys. Like I said, it's part of their identity. They're a physical team, and I think that it's making it difficult for Michigan to stay out of the penalty box. It gets the emotions up when there's big hits like this. And Michigan is not necessarily one of the most physical teams. They're more skill-based, so if Notre Dame can throw them off their game, I think that really benefits them. Irish win the draw in the Michigan zone. Cycle it around. Janicki lays it out cross ice to Seedham. Tries the shot. It's wide. And Casey's in the corner to pick the puck up for Michigan. Over to Truscott. Out to Brindley. Brindley has space. And a few bounce passes off to Shifsky, who tries to dump it into the Notre Dame zone. Seedham with a long up ice pass to Ali. Janicki adds pressure. Ali battling for it as well. Brindley comes away with it, dumps it, and the Wolverines get some fresh legs. Astapa chasing into the corner. Ali with the puck on the boards and tries to bounce it to Knubel. Instead, he'll go all the way down. Icing is called, 4.33 left in the second. There's a look at Jeff Jackson in his 19th season as the Notre Dame head coach. One of the legendary head coaches of college hockey. A 5.95 all-time record with the Fighting Irish. And Jeff Jackson knows what it takes to win this tournament. He had back-to-back -back Big Ten Tournament Championship wins with Notre Dame in 2018 and 2019 and brought Notre Dame to two of their four Frozen Four appearances in 2017 and 2018. Edwards rifles a shot off. Hughes picks it up back behind the net. Over to Warren at the point, who's laid out and loses control of the puck. Here's a two-on-two. -two. Janicki. Warren still on the ice, looks hurt. The referees will blow the play dead. As the trainer steps out to attend to Marshall Warren. I think Brandon Narado is going to want to get a look at this one.
After review of the call on the ice will stand, there is no major penalty. Wow. No major penalty. No penalty at all, which I think is pretty shocking. Um, I just don't, I don't understand that call. To me, there's clear head contact with the arms loading forward through the hit straight to the head of Marshall Warren. and I don't know what else they could be looking for. So play will resume without Marshall Warren. Tied at three, 4.15 to go in the second period. Notre Dame fans can breathe a sigh of relief. This five on five action continues. Moynihan steals the puck away in the neutral zone. Quick pass up to Slaggart. Loses an edge as he pulls up. Duke entering the zone, tries for Nazar. Arnesey cuts in to pick up the puck and Truscott dives in from the point, tries a shot. Another save from Ryan Bischel. Knubel to Slaggard and Bavaro gets a touch in there as well. Master Domenico lays the puck low for Notre Dame. Notre Dame comes away with the draw. Janicki to his brother and out to seat him at the point. A tough angle shot gloved by Barcheski. Comes out of the corner. Notre Dame slowly chipping away at that shot deficit 30 to 17 but still you know, not emblematic of the score. Justin and Trevor Janicki, like you just mentioned, are one of three sets of brothers on this Notre Dame roster, a part of the 17 total sets of brothers that have played together on Notre Dame throughout the program's history. There's years of tradition in Notre Dame hockey, 17 all time, three on the roster right now. What are the chances of that? Barczewski opts to continue play. Hughes manages to poke the puck out to the neutral zone. Seedham D to D and the Irish dump it in. Trickles all the way back out to Seedham once more. Estapa adds pressure. Hughes picks up the errant dump. More back and forth on the boards. Bavaro plays the puck into the corner and the Irish clear it to the point. Jake Boltman cuts down low. He's laid out behind the net, and Ali tries to move the puck in front. Instead, the Wolverines come away with it. A stopper will clear. Ryan Bischel comes out of the net to play the puck. Bavaro racing up ice again. Drops the puck off to the far side, and that shot steals the stick away from a Michigan defender. Fantilli picks up the loose puck, pulls up behind the net. Tries for Brindley, can't connect. Jonah, I don't know about you, it certainly feels like this, the pace of play has shifted, maybe a little faster, but far more neutral zone turnovers here in the latter half of the second period. Yeah, Notre Dame seems to really picked up that four check so far this period. Obviously, it's done well for them, two goals. Um, it'll be interesting to see in the third period. We've been talking all about Notre Dame's physicality, but in the third period in a tie game, when you're really trying to stay out of the penalty box like we've talked about all night, how physical can you be to set the precedent, but also limit the amount of risky hits that you're taking and try to limit the emotion, try to stay disciplined? An opportunity in front, Barczewski lays out and barely escapes as chaos reigns in the crease. Notre Dame still controlling the puck. Plasinski tries for a shot, it's wide, and finally the Wolverines catch a break. Nazar chases the puck into the Notre Dame zone, but they clear. Moynihan tries the cross ice pass. And again, the Wolverines come away with possession. Up ice to Duke. He has Nazar, tries to put it on net, instead gets tripped up and Puck gets stuck behind the net. 
Dumais, two blue jerseys playing it. Notre Dame will come away. Lisinski dumps it up ice. Steve Holtz plays it for Michigan. Moynihan adds pressure. The Wolverines come away with it up to a stop, but Janicki steals it away at the blue line. 30 seconds to go in the second period. Notre Dame rips it around the boards. Barcheski plays the puck, but leaves it for his defender. And how about that Notre Dame forecheck you were just talking about? Every breakout, they're adding pressure against Michigan. Tyler Duke almost gets in a messy situation with the too many men on the ice car right there. Keeps one leg on the bench, I think, to save the call. Notre Dame clears the puck down into the Michigan zone. Five seconds to go in the period. Wolverines will attempt to seal the puck there, and they will. Time expired. Two and one when scoring three or more goals in a game. We'll see how that plays out. In the next 20 minutes, we're underway at Yost, the third period of game two of the Big Ten first round tournament quarter, quarterfinal. Three to three. Our score, Michigan controlling back behind their net. Ernesty now through the neutral zone, near side. Tries for Nazar, who lunges to control the puck, and Seedham's there for Notre Dame. Nazar recovers in the quarter, bounces out to Marshall Warren, who has returned to the ice after going down in the second. And over to Ethan Edwards, who dumps it in. Ryan Bischel gets a tip on the puck back behind the net. Ryan Seedham plays it off and leaves it for Bavaro. Bavaro dumps the puck in. Hunter Strand on the forecheck to add some pressure. And Janicki plays the puck in the near side corner. Michigan manages to break out. Schiffsky. Adds a few moves, tries the net wide by a few feet, and McGordy picks up the puck in the corner. A blind pass turns the puck over. McGordy manages to glove it, but once more can't control, and Notre Dame pushes back into the Michigan zone. Warren plays the puck, leaves it for Edwards. Brindley adds some pressure, pokes it away from a Notre Dame player, and out to McGordy. The Wolverines will get a full five fresh skaters on the ice. And Notre Dame unable to break out. Moldenhauer gets his stick on the puck but loses an edge. Master Domenico will dump and chase for Notre Dame. Michigan bumps it out to Hughes. Over to Estapa. He'll race in, but the Wolverines go off sides. Looks to be Hughes, and we'll have our first stoppage of the period. Yeah, Notre Dame has come out with that strong forecheck we talked about. They just need to take advantage of these turnovers. They haven't get, been able to get any shots on goal yet, but if they keep this up, they will get chances. We had near side faceoff just outside of the Notre Dame zone. Draper versus Davis on the draw. Davis wins for Notre Dame, and Fisher tries a long cross ice pass. It won't work. The Wolverines dump back into the Notre Dame zone. Slager, cross ice to Davis, who's laid out by Pletsky. Casey moves the puck to Truscott, back to Casey, who wraps it around the boards. Fisher's there for the Irish. Fisher and Pletsky in a tussle in the corner. And trickled out to the point. A high one-timer from Slager, gloved by Jake Barczewski. Here's a look at that shot. Barczewski maybe could have played that, but took the safe route, got the whistle. A 3-3 game, we've seen dangerous plays like that before. I think back to the final, I believe it was Providence College, either BU or BC, the BC Boston goalie played the puck in that exact situation with minutes left in the third, allowed a Providence goal, which secured them the national championship. Perhaps a little lower in the quarterfinals are stakes now with plenty of time left in the third, but still no need to make a risky play. The puck heads into the netting. We'll have another stoppage. 17-23 to go in the third. 
Both of these goalies are graduate students as well. They come in this game with a lot of experience, but also you gotta think about whether or not they will be continuing their hockey journey beyond NCAA hockey. This could be their last game of competitive hockey ever. So it, it means a lot more to them, a lot to these seniors. It all comes down to this period right here. Draw in the Michigan zone, there's a drive to the net. Slager got a stick on it, but Barczewski stood tall. Here comes Nazar the opposite way. He'll move it over to Ernesty. Nazar tries for a rebound. Bischel's all over the puck. Smart move to dive on it. We'll have another stoppage at 17-11 left in the period. Great job by Ernesty to catch up to Nazar there and get an opportunity with this shot. And again, Bischel right there. Kind of a low percentage opportunity for Ernesty, but good job by Bischel to be in position as he has been all night. And it had the bones of an excellent play. That puck takes an awkward bounce, or he can slide it across the crease. It's a different story. You never know what's going to happen if you get the puck on net. So just keep firing shots, keeping these rebounds that Michigan capitalized on their third goal. Both of these teams need to continue doing that and get, get a dirty goal. It's always the goal that you least expect that wins it in games like this. Of course. Whereas in basketball, so many scoring opportunities, luck much less of a difference. An awkward bounce, a lucky shot, you might win this game. DDD back behind the net in the Michigan zone. Wolverines look to clear. Moldenhauer can't hold on to the puck at the blue line, and Marshall Warren will chase. Under pressure, Hill off to ice. We'll have another stoppage, 16.28 to go in the third. Just a little sneak peek into the Wisconsin versus Ohio State hockey game. Wisconsin is up three to one after two periods, meaning that game would go to a game three, meaning the winner of this series would have to wait to see what ends up in that series to decide where they're gonna play. If Ohio State wins, they will play in Minnesota. If Wisconsin wins, they will play in East Lansing next weekend. So neither series with a certain outcome yet. We're tied here. Michigan, of course, with the one game lead. Ohio State upset with Wisconsin yesterday, 3-1. to one. But now with a Wisconsin lead, it's been an exciting start to the Big Ten playoffs. Tyler Duke, an opportunity in front. Brindley finds the cross. Michigan retakes the lead. Great patience displayed by Tyler Duke there. Walks around the defender. Bischel comes really far out of the net trying to take away that shot opportunity here. Freezes in with the shot fake, Tyler Duke does, and passes it right over to Brindley for the cross crease backdoor goal. Excellent job by Brindley. There you can see Carter Slager. He's on the left wing, it's not his man to cover, but he's diving in, trying to pick up the stick, but a step or two behind, unable to catch up in the Wolverines. Retake the lead with 16 minutes to go in the third. And there's that speed and acceleration of Gavin Brindley coming to effect there. The Notre Dame defenseman could not catch up to him, leaving the, the back door wide open and not really much competition there. Offsides is called. I mentioned it at the beginning of the game, a nice detail dug up by our stat man, Kellen Flynn. Michigan's magic number this season is four. They're 15 and three when scoring four or more goals in a game. Three, 10 and three when scoring three or less. This puts them over that threshold. It's something we talked about on the broadcast yesterday. Michigan wants this to be a high scoring game. That's when they can finally start to outperform Notre Dame. How does the Notre Dame offense make up for this deficit, Jonah? They just need to fire pucks on net. Three goals and 20 shots already. If they keep firing pucks on net, they will get more opportunities to get one past Barczewski. First step, however, is stopping that Michigan offensive onslaught. Here come the Irish. Taking your advice, Carpenter fires one from the point. Boltman can't control the puck, and he'll tie up LaPointe racing, chasing down a uh, possible breakaway. Bjork plays the puck from the boards and will dump in. Ethan Edwards with Marshall Warren to assist, plays the puck. Glad to see Marshall Warren back on the ice after that scary hit last period. Absolutely. Frank Nazar weaves through the neutral zone but can't hold on to the puck. Knubel steals it away, and the Irish move into the Michigan zone once more. Knubel, a tough backhand shot on Barczewski. 
It's the lower pad. The Wolverines clear into the Notre Dame zone, but Irish bump it back into the neutral zone. Frank Nazar opts for the dump and chase once more. A little bit of a tussle between Slaggard and Nazar. And we'll have another stoppage in play. It's a tricky decision. The season on the line in the next 14 minutes. Notre Dame will have to try everything to win this game. Jake Boltman moves the puck up ice for the Irish. Marshall Warren intercepts after Strand can't hold on to the puck. Wraparound bounces off the referee, but the Wolverines recover. Schiffsky enters the Irish zone with Brindley. Instead, he'll pull up, looks to the point. Edwards dumps it back down low. Gavin Brindley will pick the puck up. Quick escape move, and there's another shot. Runs into traffic. Ethan Edwards under pressure at the hash marks. Estapa tries something. Schiffsky picks up a puck. Fires a shot. It won't go too far. Here's an opportunity. Ali crushing down the ice. And he's tripped in front of the net. Will await the call. Ethan Edwards called for a hook. Ali almost on a breakaway there, Jonah. Yeah, you could see he left the zone early and was calling for that pass. Michigan number 23, Had a lot of speed, good hooking. pass, able to pick it up on his backhand and crash the net like that. For sure a penalty by Ethan Edwards, but in that situation, that's a penalty you're okay with taking. Could have prevented a goal. I would take your chances on a penalty kill versus letting him walk in one on one of Barczewski. I think that does save a goal. Ali managed to move the puck to his backhand, couldn't finish, partially because of that hook. And there's Edwards in the box. And Michigan is fortunate enough that Ali didn't get off to too much of a breakaway, or else that could have been called a penalty shot. Notre Dame, so far one for three on power plays tonight. It's a scramble in front of the net. Down a goal. An opportunity to take advantage. Seedham drops to Janicki, back to Seedham, and back to the point once more. Janicki can't hold on to the puck and must dump it. The Wolverines and Draper able to clear. Minute 30 to go in the power play. The Irish re enter the zone. Moynihan in the near corner, wraps the puck around the boards, and Onslaught of Michigan pressure forces an error, and the Wolverines are able to clear the puck again. Notre Dame recoups. They'll re enter. Dylan Duke is able to clear for Michigan back to the neutral zone. That's a minute down on the power play. Here's Fisher with Ali, opts to shoot. Truscott drops down to a knee to block the shot. And Marshall Warren's able to clear for Michigan once more. A very effective kill so far, Jonah. Yeah, Michigan has really improved their penalty kill throughout the season, over 84% since January 19th. And prior to that, they were the worst penalty kill in the Big Ten. So credit to Coach Narado for really turning things around there. Another Michigan clear. Forces Bischel out of the net, and Brindley adds some pressure. Gets tied up with Bischel's stick. Here's a long pass. Strand entering the zone with speed, drops off to Fisher. Ten seconds left in the power play, a final push from the Fighting Irish. Fisher at the point, opts to shoot into traffic. Ali tries for a rebound. And the Wolverines will successfully kill the penalty. Bavaro fires a shot, it's wide. And Fisher pinches to keep the puck in. The Wolverines clear to the neutral zone and recover the puck. Here's Seamus Casey now. He'll pull up at the red line, dump it in, allow for a full Michigan change after the penalty kill. Ernesty, quick pass, Nazar in front, tries to drop it back off to Ernesty. An almost perfect play falls apart at the very end. 
Michigan is playing with some fire, Jonah. Yeah, back-to-back -back plays by Nazar. Really good ideas, just not the execution of the team. Puck back into the Michigan zone. Marshall Warren collides with the teammate, but manages to clear. Dylan Duke chases after the puck. Here's a chance for him, unable to get a shot off. Extra defense from Ryan Seedham. Fast break now from Jaden Davis up ice. He'll cut to the near side, tries to move the puck in front of the net. Can't quite, but Trevor Janicki wraps it around. Boltman keeps the puck in at the point, and Slaggart will play it at the hash marks. Errors costing the Fighting Irish. Tyler Carpenter unable to keep the puck in at the point. Ends an offensive streak for Notre Dame. Here comes T.J. Hughes. He'll enter the Irish zone and pull up. It's knocked over in the corner. No referee calling a penalty despite the wants of the Michigan crowd. And Mastro Domenico can't control a cross-ice pass. Back and forth play continues. Neither team able to establish that sustained possession so important to scoring in hockey. Yeah, Michigan's had a tough time getting into the Notre Dame zone, and Notre Dame's doing a lot of dump and chase, but hasn't been able to possess the puck in their offensive zone. Under 10 to go in the period. Here's a push from Michigan. Shifsky. It's McGrordy controlling the puck back behind the net. He'll drop it off to Warren at the point. Warren, cross ice, shot down low. McGrordy sends it back to the point. A secondary shot trickles into the corner after it ricochets off a defender. Notre Dame finally gets a stick on the puck. Fisher looks up ice to Moynihan. He'll cross to Slaggart. Slaggart tries a shot and it's deflected into the netting. And we'll get some more extracurriculars. Um, an offensive push from Notre Dame with the sport of possession. Seedham controlling in the corner. A risky cross ice pass to Janicki. He doesn't pay up. And he'll trip Moldenhauer after Moldenhauer is set to go on a hot break. Jonah, not what the Irish need with only eight minutes to go. That's a tough play for Janicki there. I don't think he was intentionally trying to trip Notre him Dame up, but his stick eight, has gotten the And that is exactly what you don't need if you're Notre Dame trying to come back into this game. Janicki whiffs on the shot in an attempt to poke the puck away. Trips up Moldenhauer. Michigan up a man for the next two minutes. The best power play in the Big Ten with another opportunity to show off their talents. One thing to pay attention to on this power play, watch Dylan Duke in front of the net. He's been getting messy with Bischel out in the crease, and Bischel has not been liking it. Duke playing for the puck, wrapped around to Brindley. Brindley will drop it off to Casey. Cross ice, McGrordy, one-timer. Duke almost got a tip in there. Brindley back to Casey at the point. Low again to the hash marks, out to Hughes. And an errant pass gives Notre Dame a break. But those first 30 seconds, Jonah, that looked like the Michigan power play of old. Seamus Casey enters the zone with speed, a rebound. And Bischel couldn't control it, but the play is blown dead. side draw won by the Wolverines Truscott moves it low to Moldenhauer quick play set up Shifsky couldn't get a stick on it and the Irish clear the puck once more Barcheski will play it behind the Michigan net Truscott picks up the puck looks to Nazar and then cross ice to a stop up Moldenhauer drives in Nazar tries to pick up the puck in an excellent clear. Drives the buck all the way back down to Barcheski once more. Here's 
Casey looking to start things off for Michigan. Here's the slingshot. Brindley enters the zone with speed. Can't hold on to it, but has help from his teammates. McGordy now on the near side. Looks low down to Duke. Back to McGordy, out to the point. Casey and now to Brindley. 27 seconds to go in the power play. Duke. To McGordy at the hash marks again. He tries for Duke and it's tipped to the boards. Duke recovers. McGordy will have a chance. And Duke tries across, no one's home. Casey recovers the puck at the blue line, off to Brindley, what a shot, it's high and into the netting. Four seconds left in the power play, 6.41 to go in the third. Michigan's looked good on the power play, but unable to convert, Jonah. Yeah, and there's Bischel again. Even when he's not making saves, it's just the intimidation factor down there. You know you're not gonna get an easy one past him, so it makes you be more selective with your shots and just makes it tougher as an on an offense. You see that in the playmaking of the Wolverines. It's almost as if they're holding off on certain shots, waiting for a better opportunity. At times that is better opportunity has not come. Yeah, and that's a big kill for Notre Dame now. It's under seven minutes to go and potentially in your season. Big kill, they need to get something going on offense here, get a shot to go by, get some puck luck, something. The penalty expires. Notre Dame returns to full strength as Janicki re-enters the ice. Both Janicki's on the ice right now, and the Notre Dame defense look up ice and break the puck out for the first time in two minutes. Janicki into the corner. The Irish try a pass to the point. No one's home, and Ryan Bishop will have to play the puck. He'll drop it off for Fisher. Fisher up ice to Janicki, racing into the Michigan zone under pressure from Holtz and Moldenhauer. Wraps it around the boards. Strand and Duke face off in the corner. Michigan comes away with it. Moldenhauer under pressure, moves it to the neutral zone. Jake Boltman dumps it back into Michigan's end quickly, but it enters the netting. There's another stoppage, 5.47 to go in the third. So if Notre Dame does score here, It'll go into an overtime period, and it'll be continuous overtime. No shootout to decide the winner of this game. See if Notre Dame can force that opportunity. Certain goals tonight have come when we've least expected that both teams capable of striking at any moment. Anything could happen in the next five minutes. Notre Dame dumps and chases into the Michigan zone. Davis adding pressure after Barczewski played the puck. A stopper receives on the far end boards and moves it through the neutral zone. The puck just barely stays in play and the Irish manage to clear back to the neutral zone. Frank Nazar under pressure from Carter Slaggart manages to push the puck back into the Notre Dame zone. Slaggart loses an edge, still gets a hand on the puck and once more, the Wolverines clear it down ice. Seedham drops the puck off in the corner for Moynihan. Moynihan under pressure, tries a cross ice pass. It doesn't work. McGrordy tries to dump it down. Can't control it. A very back and forth minute of hockey. Knubel finally enters the Michigan zone. After a few successful moves, the last doesn't. Michigan gets a stick on the puck, but Notre Dame keeps it in. Patrick Moynihan pushes it around the boards. He'll cut cross ice, falls over Brindley. And Brindley moves the puck to Shifsky, who has to retreat under pressure. Ethan Edwards will carry the puck across the red line, dump it in, and allow Bischel to play it for Notre Dame. Knubel looking for a lead. And Knubel recovers the puck, takes a lousy shot, but it trips up Barczewski. After it pops in and out of his glove, he manages to recover. We'll have a stoppage at 4.05 left in the third. We've seen a few of those shots be successful this weekend. Notre Dame's first goal last night from far past the faceoff dots. First goal tonight off the faceoff, almost from the blue line. That shot there almost trickles through Barczewski. They need to keep firing pucks on net. Well, it's 
Opposite playbooks for both of these teams, Jonah. Michigan looking for those special opportunities to sneak one past Bischel. Notre Dame, a weaker offense, playing against a weaker goalie. Firing shots has been a successful strategy so far. Fisher dumps the puck into the Michigan zone. Duke's there to play it. Ali adding pressure. Fisher holds up the puck on the near side boards. Hunter Strand is there as well. Klusinski controls for the Irish. He fires one against the bench. So the refs rule that it went down to play. Just under four minutes to go in this game. I have to keep an eye on Bischel for when he leaves the net if Notre Dame decides to pull the goalie to get the extra attacker on the ice. Of course, crucial to that decision and something Notre Dame has struggled with is that sustained offensive possession. They haven't had it in a few minutes. And need that before they can pull Bischel. Seedham opts D to D, a long pass up ice. Starts the Notre Dame offensive push. Barczewski plays the puck back behind the net. Whips it around out to the point. Bavaro unable to control the puck on the blue line. And the Irish have to retreat. Wolverines able to break into the Notre Dame zone, but unable to hold on to the puck. The Irish clear it. Marshall Warren will pick the puck up back behind the red line. He looks up to Brindley. Brindley over the red line and tries to dump the puck in. Instead, it's out of play once more. Still no opportunity for the Irish to pull Bischel, Jonah. Yeah, Brindley fired that right into the Notre Dame bench. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. No opportunity to pull Bischel. It might have been too early anyway. We've seen coaches recently have been starting to pull the goalie earlier. However, in a situation like this, like, like you've said, not enough offensive control time for Notre Dame. It, it's too early now. We'll see probably within the next minute, minute and a half, I would expect Fischl to be gone, but it'll depend on the control by Notre Dame. A faceoff just outside of the Michigan zone, an opportunity for Notre Dame to establish possession. Hunter Strand on the draw for the Irish. The Wolverines come away with the puck. Fisher, a little bit of a cross check on the near side boards. Master Domenico controlling the puck, uses an escape move up to Ali. He'll dump the puck in. Barczewski plays it back behind the net. Bischel comes out of net but returns once the Wolverines regain possession. Shivsky makes a smart move, dumps it, and the Wolverines get five fresh skaters on the ice. Master Domenico moving up ice. Bischel finally pulled from the game. It'll be six on five. 2.16 to go in the third. Truscott freezing the puck back behind the net. An onslaught of blue jerseys fighting for it. They'll clear it out to Duke, who dumps it down ice. Ernest adding pressure. Bavaro, the one line of defense. Frank Nazar picks the puck up behind the net. And the Irish are able to clear. Here's a three on two opportunity. The shot is wide. Moynihan picks up the puck but can't move it cross ice. It's deflected. Seedham will have to chase after it. He'll try a cross ice pass. It won't go. McGordy shoots. It's wide by inches. Here's an opportunity for Brindley. He can't connect. Now Edwards moves it down low. TJ Hughes can't find the net. Notre Dame acting as the line of final defense. Those saves were almost as good as Bischel's tonight, Jonah. Now the Irish re-enter the Michigan zone. Knubel recovers the puck up to Janicki and wrapped around the boards. One minute to go in the period. Moynihan with the puck for a six-man Notre Dame team. They'll wrap it around. Here's a one-time opportunity. Left in front. There's a chance. It's off the crossbar, I believe. Michigan escapes a precarious situation. 46 seconds to go. An excellent clear by Brindley forces Notre Dame to reset. Here's a chance. The shot's just wide. That'll draw an icing. Michigan has missed the empty net by inches twice. 
Noble on the draw once more, this time on the opposite side of the zone. Movement from Duke resets the draw. Knubel wins the draw this time, back to the point. There's a shot wide in front. Barczewski lays out his lower blocker, saves a goal. Burnley pokes the puck away, 15 seconds to go. One last chance for the Fighting Irish. They'll move it to Moynihan. He looks to the point, Seedham crosses over, another shot wide, four seconds left on the clock. The final opportunity, quick cross, Moynihan the one-timer wide, Michigan's advancing to the semifinals. Barczewski saves the season for the Wolverines with the skate blade. I cannot believe that. What a stop from Michigan. The Wolverines sweep the Irish for the second time in as many weeks and send them packing to South Bend. And you can see it, Notre Dame taking in this loss, the last game of their season. It's a tough way to go out, but what a series we had between these two teams. Great Big Ten playoff hockey. I'm excited to see how this tournament pans out going forward.